<laughs> so welcome to the call, everybody. Uh, today's going to be an exciting call. And uh, as you guys come in, I'm just going to go ahead and start talking a little bit and, and getting things going. Um, uh, welcome to Fearless Tuesdays. Uh, we don't really have a title for it, do we? But we should give you give it one. But uh, today's live call, we're going to be having uh, two guests on the call today. And one is Eddie Brick, uh, the guy with the Ram shirt on over there. And, um, and the other one is Julian. And uh, Julian is, uh, well, they're both, excuse me, clients. Julian and Eddie are both clients of Fearless. They've, uh, they've been clients for a while. And uh, Eddie's actually helped coach at several events and he's been around a while. Uh, he went through the program many years ago and he's had um, uh, a lot of changes in his life. And what we're gonna be specifically talking about today is the revealing process and how it changes your life and how it can create immense growth when done consistently and when you stop pushing and forcing, and we're going to talk about their personal experiences. I've talked about mine. I've talked about the fact that my life's changed a lot, but I think for a lot of you guys, hearing it directly from a student who has gone through the process, uh, being a student of mine, and and uh, really gone through the process, really applied it and changed their lives, and hearing their insights can be really powerful for you. Uh, because you get it from a different perspective. You get it from sometimes a newer perspective and a more raw perspective. And Julian is an even newer client than Eddie. He, you came around within the last year, I'd say, right, Julian? About a year ago? Uh, two, 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 and and a half years. two and a half years ago. Um, the time flies, man. And Julian, life has changed a lot, especially recently because you got really consistent. And consistently, we always say the 1% rule and consistency are the keys, right? And, uh, and because you've gotten so consistent, I was talking to Anthony about it because Anthony does a lot of work with you. Uh, your life has changed radically over the last, uh, last few months. I know you say, you're like, I don't know if it's that radical, but to a lot of people it is. Um, a lot of people like to downplay their success. So uh, with that said, guys, uh, why don't you guys write in the chat, pop in there something, let us know you guys can hear me and welcome the guys to the call really quick. And then we're gonna get started. takes them a second to write in the chat, unless they can't hear me. Then I said all that for nothing. There we go. <laughs> now they're starting to come up. Okay, cool. Awesome guys, welcome to the call. Um, now also uh, you're covering, Andrew, you're covering YouTube, right? We've got a certain amount of people on YouTube. It hasn't yeah. gone live yet, we're having some kind of trouble, but just keep going, uh, we'll get it going at some point. Okay. So the YouTube family will be joining us soon and uh, then we'll, but we're going to continue on without them. They can catch up later. This will be replayed later for anybody that came in late and uh, didn't catch the whole thing. Um, I want to check on one thing. This is weird. Okay, cool. Got a, uh, yeah, something must be wrong. We've got a relatively small audience right now. Um, this is abnormally small. So some, something's even wrong with, uh, I think we're not getting many people on zoom either. So let me know if you can get it going live. That would be awesome. Um, but either way, it's going to be replayed on YouTube. So people will be able to see it. So guys, let's dive in. Um, let's start with Eddie since you're the, uh, senior client. Uh, how long ago did you come to Fearless? It was a while back. I always, I still remember the day I met you because you stood out. Out of a lot of clients that came in the door, you really stood out when you came in. First off, you came in with a huge bodybuilder, um, and uh, that was awesome. Never seen that guy again, but he seemed cool enough. And uh, and you uh, you came in, and I remember you were uh, really anxious, nervous. And I remember you had said you'd had a lot of, you'd done a lot with dating and dating coaching. You'd done a lot of programs, a lot of trainings, had a lot of private coaching, and you were really wanting to shift this area of your life. And you were really pushing really hard, trying to get results, push, 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 push. And, um, and I know that as we did a lot of work, we had to teach you how to slow down internally. And there was a lot of, a lot of heavy work for you. You went through a lot of deep stuff. I do remember that too. And how much your life changed as you started to apply the principles. Can you talk about how, uh, what you went through originally and, and what, and yeah, I'm not sure how early on we started you with releasing, but how much of an effect releasing had in that picture or where, where, where it ended up. 
revealing process, I should say, is because we, we revealing was is almost my way of looking at taking and releasing and adding steps that have to do with embodiment and looking at where you're going more, projecting into the future of what you're creating more than what you're letting go of, but go ahead. Right. Um, so yeah, like you mentioned, um, I did a lot of, you know, pickup artist stuff uh, prior to engaging with Fearless. Um, the results that I was expecting to get were not coming, you know, together and actually the complete opposite. I kept pissing women off. Uh, I, I still couldn't have gotten a date to save my life. Um, and I was just like, what's wrong with me? And, you know, making it all about me and something's wrong with me. I mean, my height an issue, my weight an issue, the clothes I wear an issue. I mean, I even bought like stilettos, you know, from like the Hollywood store, you know, thinking that's going to give me some kind of advantage. Um, just so everyone knows, I'm, I'm five foot two. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I'm not good looking like Brian, but, you know, I do have some love boat going on here. And, um, you know, it's uh, it, it, meeting Brian for the first time. I knew that the first thing he was talking about was confidence. And that's something I did not have and I was lacking. Um, so I went, like he said, you know, the first experience workshop and, you know, I had a very pushing energy and, you know, and I learned through time that the more I pushed uh, to get the results, the more I was pushing it away. And with releasing, I learned to let go or surrender to the process of actually getting something. And the, let, the more I let go of the want for something to happen, the more it started coming to me. And it was such a, a, a mind like trick that was played because I even called Brian a couple of times. I'm like, Brian, why is this happening to me? And why are girls starting to like me? Like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know how to do it. I don't know how to be with it. Like I had no idea what to do. Um, it was just a big shift that was happening and releasing started about, I think maybe four or five months into working with you, Brian, because of the experience. And then in the three months that we did at one time right now, it's the week long. I think we did it only in the first part of the week long process. Mm -hmm. So, and then of course we did a lot in Bucharest, um, like from day one and, uh, you know, and at first, you know, it, it really starts to be very painful. You, it's, you, you start hitting memories, you start hitting everything that triggers you. And most people will stop because they don't want to go through the feeling of feeling that tension, feeling that, you know, the vulnerability of being hurt, of being seen, of being, you know, showing that you're crying, showing that you're actually sad. Well, when I started with Fearless, I think I was 36. So 2015, Brian? Uh, so probably around there, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a, I was a single dad. I had a growing son and I, nothing was happening with my life, not money, career, like nothing. I felt like such a loser. Um, you know, like what was the point of living? I, I never had a suicide pro, you know, thought in my mind, but I just gave up on life. I gave up on myself. I gave up on what it was like to be human, what it was like to be a man, what it was like to, you know, feel because nothing was going my way. You know, it was very sad. It was very depressed. Um, so I had to feel all that. And at first I didn't know how to feel it. I didn't want to feel it. And then, you know, through the coaching with Brian and Dave with Fearless, um, you know, they allowed me to learn how to accept me for who I am. And that was, I think, the most difficult challenge for me um, is accepting who I am because I never liked myself my whole life. You know, I was always picked on. I was always, you know, made fun of, you know, couldn't get a date to save my life. Literally, I don't know how I became a dad, to be honest, um, but it happened. See, something that you strikes me there, I think there's a moment you said something that I think is so powerful and I, and I, you may not remember it, but you said it more than once and it's very powerful. You, you just, and what you just said now really illustrates that moment because you said I used to be picked on a lot and I was always afraid of my height. I bought these stilettos or these big high heel shoes and to be taller and all this stuff. And this stuff really bothered you. You were always trying to be the cool guy. You wanted to be good enough. And then one time you said you got good with women. You got past a lot of this bullshit. You started to become real with women and you realized, I remember you said you realized that women actually liked you. And then 
one day somebody said, well, what, do, what do you think about tall women? He said, I love dating tall women. I said, what do you mean? Well, I love it when a woman's so tall, I have to stand on something to kiss her. Yeah. <laughs> and that made you so happy. And it's really interesting because that almost flies in the face of this old story that I'm too short. Right. You got so giddy and excited about that idea that it was almost like, the idea of being short didn't even seem to bother you anymore. Do you remember no. that one? Oh, I do. I clearly do. I, I didn't bother me at all. I mean, in fact, I did it as a joke, you know, thinking it'd be funny. And the girl was so impressed that I was really confident with myself that I actually got up on the chair to kiss her. And I'm like, this shit works. Like, I, I enjoy it. So I, I, I kept using the, the enjoyment of making not making fun of my height but being okay with my height and accepting the fact dude this is what's this is what it is i'm short i can't change that so and then i bought you know step stools to put in the shower so i'd have sex with you know with girls stepping on step stools because i couldn't reach you know and it was it was i mean fun and girls were entertained by that That's that exactly this is a big part of what fearless is about is becoming really okay with who you are so much so that people can't help but like you. And I think a lot of people don't understand that, that that's a lot of our program is learning to be so confident. You don't hide your flaws anymore and they become your superpowers. Would you agree? Um, would you agree with that assessment, Eddie? And then I'm going to get with you in a sec, Julian, on this. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the biggest flaw that men think have, they, that they have is being vulnerable. Yeah. And the minute I learned how powerful vulnerability can be, I started to really enjoy it. And to this day, I, I, I love being vulnerable with, with people, with women, with men, just, you know, my family, because it brings me closer and it shows how real I am versus somebody that's trying to put on a facade. Yeah, yeah. that flies in the face of what a lot of people teach, doesn't it? All the time. Yeah. And a lot of people would swear that doesn't work. And so I want to jump to you. I want to come back to you on this. I want to jump to Julian. Can you, sh first off, Julian, sh share a little bit about what got you started here. And then I'd love to have you answer that question. Do you, what's your experience with this idea of being vulnerable and how, how, has it, how has it affected you in the same way? Yeah. Um, so I came to Phyllis in like late 2018. So it's been like almost three years since I've been here. But um, yeah, I guess throughout most of my twenties, I just felt myself wilting in a way where I was sort of shriveling up and I was um, just closed off from more and more things. Um, and, you know, I was sort of, I was taking whatever job would hire me regardless of whether or not I liked it. I was fucking whatever girl showed interest in me regardless of whether or not I liked her, right? Like, uh, I was, I was, you know, hanging out with people just because they invited me regardless of whether or not I actually enjoyed hanging out with them. So it was a lot of, sort of taking what was coming my way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, at some, at some level, I just, I wasn't content with that. Um, and I think the, there was actually one, the main thing that uh, brought me to fearless was uh, me going out on a date, right? Cause I sort of, uh, I was me, it was me trying to fight my way out of, out of this hole that I was in, I guess an apathetic hole. Um, I started cold approaching on my own and I ended up getting a date with this beautiful girl who was like, you know, I like tall black women, tall, slim black women. So I ended up getting a date with this girl. Um, I met her on a Saturday night. We go out, we're, you know, we're dancing, we're having fun, we're talking. And um, I remember late in the night, um, you know, we're, we're standing face to face, we're really close together and we're talking about sex. And I just remember I, I didn't feel anything. So I'm, you know, I'm really standing there talking about sex and I'm, you know, I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, my, my dick should be hard, right? Like I should be, I should feel something in this moment. And um, yeah, so with that girl, she ended up like, we went back to her place and she kicked me out at like two in the morning. I never saw her again. But my point is from that, from that moment, I knew there was something, there was something that just wasn't happening face to face, right? So um, call it fate or call it the YouTube algorithm. I, I go on YouTube one day and I see a fearless video where, where you're doing the model work and you guys are talking about you know, all this energy and all this blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, what are you talking about? But um, I, I happened to look up the website and um, there was a workshop the next weekend. So I, I hopped on a bus to New York. Now it was like September of 2018 and, and here I am. So um, in terms of releasing and vulnerability, um, 
yeah, I guess sort of a big hang up I've had growing up was sort of believing that I'm boring. So I was always a quiet kid growing up. Um, you know, and for the most part, you know, people made fun of me being quiet, but um, at a certain point in my life, it, it started to get to me to the point where I was, I was so wrapped up and so afraid of showing myself that I, you know, I was boring in the fact that I wasn't letting anybody around me know about what kind of person I am, right? Um, so, um, you know, releasing has been huge for me just in terms of letting myself be okay with, even if I am boring, you know, like, who cares, right? Like I, um, so, you know, coming to terms with who I am and being okay with that has actually opened up things more for me. Um, yeah, so I, so yeah, I guess releasing has been huge for me in that way and that um, I've been able to let go of those feelings. Um, not sure if I answered the question all the way. Um, yeah, yeah, well, no, no, it's the fact that you're, you're being vulnerable with us right now. Yeah. And sharing this idea that you're that you felt bo that you were boring because yeah I, yeah I like that myself man I for years I thought I was boring I thought I was I thought I was really boring to women and I thought women would always find me boring and it was that was a big one for me so that's I can really relate to that how many of you guys in the chat can relate to the feeling like you're boring to women that you're nothing special we got Eddie's raising his hand over here um, so and if you guys if you guys feel that way or yep. There they are. They're starting to come in. Absolutely. You, me, uh, nothing special. So that's, that's a big one for a lot of the guys that come to us. And I'd like to ask, um, well, first off, uh, uh, how did that change for you? How do you, how do you feel now? Do you feel like that now? Or is it changed? Is, is, is there a difference? What's going on that's different in that area? Yeah. I mean, I guess now it's just, you know, I have my interests and, you know, some people are going to like that and some people aren't, but I, you know, I guess I'm just more comfortable with um, expressing my personal interests and, and people who have gravitated toward that. So yeah, again, it's sort of just being more comfortable with, with who you are makes people more comfortable around you. And, you know, I'm still in the process of all this also. So, you know, uh, honestly, part of me being on this call is me stepping out there. So I'm, I'm honestly doing a lot of this for me as much as I am, you know, to, to help you all too. So. So yeah, it's just, um, yeah, it's, uh, I guess it's a constant process of checking in with yourself and making sure you like yourself. And once you like yourself and you're comfortable expressing that, then the world will respond in kind. Well, I want to get into what is revealing to each one of you, because I'm sure the clients are going to ask that. I've done a lot of revealing with clients on, and we use the term revealing for branding purposes, but uh, sometimes the guys say releasing, because that was a common term. Letting go is another common term. So there's many terms. But, um, but uh, I want to ask what you, one of the questions I want to get into for you guys is, you know, what is revealing to you versus, you know, because a lot of these guys in the call, they might be here the first time and they want to know. But before I do um, get into that, I want to ask you, what has literally changed in each of your lives? What, what are some of the, the successes that you've had from doing, uh, from really doing, getting in and doing deep work on your vulnerability on your confidence, which confidence to me is the willingness to be vulnerable and, you know, and redeveloping those internal parts of yourself. Cause that's what a revealing process is really about. It's about redeveloping how you feel about yourself at a deep level and your embodiment. Right. So if let's start with you, Julian, on this one, what has, uh, what has literally changed in your life? Um, yeah. So things have just improved in like every facet of my life. It's more of a, you know, a quality versus quantity thing. So, um, you know, I started, so I did, I did my revealing workshop, uh, last March. Um, so, you know, it was right before the pandemic started, which is great because these random cries that I have would be really awkward in an office setting, but, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, just, uh, in terms of, uh, how things have changed for me, like, um, I'm, I'm going for what I want in my life. Right. So, um, I'm going for the, the, the jobs that I want. Uh, I got a second job working as a, uh, as a bartender, um, you know, because I wanted to make more money. So I'm going for that. Um, my relationships with my family have improved. I said no to my mother for the first time in decades, like last fall, which has been, which is interesting. And like my mother, 
our relationship has changed just because of that. Like I feel like my mother looks at me as an adult now. Um, my relationship with my friends has changed just because I'm sort of, uh, how do I say, not dictating, but I'm sort of taking ownership and like planning things to do that everyone's gonna like versus sort of in the past, I would just go along even if I didn't want to do something and I would just be like a sour, like a sad sack at the event, you know? So um, that's sort of, you know, so my relationship has changed with my friends and that way um, I'm going for the women that I want versus, you know, taking what comes to me, which, which is great because, you know, it's a better relationship because I actually want to be there. You know, there's no drama about, you know, breaking up with a girl because, you know, I'm able to be honest and say, you know, I want to keep this casual. And um, yeah, I'm having better sex because I'm more open. Uh, yeah, yeah, things have been it, great. You said on the phone to me, you're dating two women that you really like. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I'm, this has happened like really recently, like in the last two months where I really started to turn a corner in terms of really getting the women that I like. So yeah, I'm dating two women that I like. Um, I'm dating a third woman who's like, we're working on it, right? We haven't gotten too serious, but we've gone on a couple of dates. We've kissed once, but you know, but yeah, so I'm meeting the women that I like. Things are going great. Um, I got this new job that I'm working at where, you know, I'm hanging out with my coworkers for the first time, maybe in my life, right? Where like, you know, they're asking me to come hang out with them and things like that. So, um, yeah, I think just sort of the world is opening back up to me in a way that I haven't felt since I was a child, honestly. All right. That's powerful, man. I can, I can, I can, uh, it's something about the way you say it. It, it feels really, uh, uh, real to me. So, and I, and that's, that's what it comes down to. A lot of people get feed a bunch of bullshit when they, you can tell the difference in other words, you know, some people say what they want to say. And I feel like you're being really honest with me about, you know, what's really going on for you. Um, uh, Eddie, what is, what changed in your life from getting into embodiment release, energetic embodiment, releasing that type of stuff and revealing really, um, and really the work in general, how does your life look different today? Oh, today the world is completely different because every, you know, all the teachings that we, that you were teaching me, you know, I still use it to this day, everything, you know, movement, releasing. I mean, I was just showing you earlier, like I have some cold sores because I was releasing the other day because it's a physiological reaction. Um, people get sick, people, you know, things happen. We've had, speaking of that, yeah, we've had clients throw up. We've, we've had more than one, many clients throw up. We've had people get sick to their stomach. We're just sick to their stomach, throw up. We've had people, uh, I mean, all kinds of start shaking, start arms start flipping, you know, they're, they're called ab reactions or abnormal reactions. It's very interesting to watch when this stuff starts to happen when somebody's hitting something deep inside them and the body goes under resistance. Um, doesn't happen all the time, so don't you know, and don't be looking for that, but that can happen. So continue on. Happen, and especially in the beginning when I started doing the, the releasing work, it happened a lot because there was so much I had to let go of, so much I had to release, and yeah. uh, and so revealing things that were revealing to me was how my life shifted from me not being liked to all of a sudden being loved and appreciated and adored yeah um by by everybody mostly women because you know one of the biggest things that i came to fearless for was to get better with women and then the minute i dropped wanting to date women the more women started coming into my life and i didn't know what to do with that and i would call you consistently and be like brian what, what's going on i don't understand Let's talk about that before that last part. That last sentence was really powerful. As soon as I dropped, how did you say it? I dropped what? I, I dropped really cool. wants or the desire. I dropped the wanting women. Yeah. And this is something we talk about a lot is you got, if you can reach a point where you no longer want or need the women that you're happy with or without them, doesn't mean you can't enjoy them and, and see them as in your life and beautiful, but you drop that one. That, and that's the hardest thing. So many clients don't want to drop that one, right? And so talk about that experience. Like, what was it like trying to drop a want? This idea that if I don't, because the thing that a lot of these guys on here might be thinking that if I, well, if I let go of the want, how am I supposed to get what I want? You see, that's the whole dynamic, right? It's kind of, well, that's how really how it works. It's 
letting go of the want because what's happening it goes with what we we're talking about earlier the pushing for wanting so the more you push something the more you're pushing it away versus allowing it to come into your life so when it's starting to come into your life there's an effect coming because you're not pushing as much you're allowing all the energies to come to you you know one thing when i talk about the vulnerability calls is when you speak to women you know are you looking to give them something or are you looking to get something so there's a get versus give so the minute i stopped wanting to get something from them it's just another way maybe they'll understand it that way. Like I need to get her. I want her to like me. She needs to like me. Then I'll feel better about myself. And versus like, actually, I just want to give her myself. I want to give her my love. I want to give her my appreciation. I think she's beautiful. I want to compliment her how beautiful she is and not expect anything in return. Right. So, and when you stop expecting something in return, then things start coming back to you twofold. So that was huge for me, uh, for revealing, the revealing process of the more I let go of expecting something, like having expectations, the more I was, I was attracting into my life. Yeah, it's so hard for people to get that. That's so powerful. And, um, and so then well, let's go back to what you were attracting. What, what do you have now? How's much? Because you said you did call me one night and say, I don't get it. Why are all these women in my life? I keep meeting women. And I remember you were completely shocked by that. And, uh, and I remember you'd called me before that, uh, right before it all started to change for you, you were at this really high point of sadness because all this emotion was coming out of you. And you'd, you'd called me after having a few drinks one night and uh, sent me a text, you know, and, uh, and it was a little, I won't say exactly what you said. I'll leave that up to you. But, uh, and I could tell from the text you've been drinking. So I asked you. And, said, <laughs> and so... So, <laughs> yeah, you, you really, yeah, why does nobody love me? And then, and then, uh, so then I said, I'll talk to you the next day. And then when you were sober, you had your big breakthrough that week. And then suddenly all this stuff started to happen. Now, how much has your life changed? What, what do you have in your life now as we continue forward? Um, I have an amazingly beautiful wife. Um, you know, I didn't want to get married. Hey, I just, hey. She helps us out at the workshops now. And she's yeah, awesome. At the workshops now, correct. Yeah. Uh, I have an amazingly gorgeous wife, someone who I'd never thought I could ever attract or be with, um, you know, and uh, work and money is just coming a lot easier than before. You know, I don't have to keep fighting for it or just keep looking for something. Things just kind of like happen the more I manifest on it. So I, I guess another revealing topic, Ryan, is understanding manifestation. Yeah. So when I manifest with, but with, vulnerable you have to manifest being vulnerable because you still have that pulling energy versus just giving so when i manifest i think about things that i want to achieve not i need to achieve so and i, mean, I don't know things are, it's kind of just becomes a flow so we, we talk a lot about flow state so i just feel like i'm in this amazing flow state right now you know, even with my wife, the relationship, sometimes, you know, when she goes like, ah, you know, I have to ground myself, calm her down and, okay, what do you really want? And sometimes she really just wants that hug, you know, and that appreciation that I'm here, I'm present. And so, but earlier we talked about, you can't have the one. So how is this one different than the other one? Like you can't have a want and get what you want. So how is this one different? Because I'm not, uh, I can be without it. Yeah. I, I surrender to the outcome of it. You surrender to the outcome of it. Yeah. So you let go of the attachment to the outcome of it. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So the one and is then becomes enjoyable versus painful. Right. And, so and things start coming and then I can really enjoy it and be like, oh my God, this just happened. <laughs> yeah. And that's a big thing that we work on is getting you to the point where you're free from the attachments. Because Buddha said that all sorts of a suffering is attachment, right? Oh, yeah. And, and I think that's really true. Because as I let go of more and more, people will say, well, you're looking, they say to me all the time, they say, well, why are you looking at the negative? And I said, I'm not looking at the negative. Negative is a perspective. What I'm doing is looking at what you call the negative and seeing beauty in it. So it no longer has an effect over me. And yes, that's, and one thing I agree of it. that's one thing yeah. I do a lot is looking for the beauty and the sadness where sadness is really, you know, negative where we think it's negative. <laughs> So I learned to appreciate all the faults about me and understanding how beautiful all those things are. 
versus yeah. how ugly they are. Yeah, that's powerful. Hey, uh, so I want to jump to Julian really quick. Julian, did you have a lot of want in your life before you started the revealing process? And then how are you, uh, how are you dealing with that? Yeah, I guess the, the sort of the want for acceptance uh, uh, be socially or with women. And uh, yeah, sort of that want keeps you from, it's like a leash on you that keeps you from fully jumping out there, which I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain this. It's like, yeah, if you, it's like you just don't fully commit to anything, which, which hampers all of your outcomes, right? So versus, so how do I, sorry. Um, yeah, it's like you just, it keeps you from completely being yourself, um, you know, and that turns off people because it's not 100% honest. So people kind of don't trust that. Whereas, you know, once you, and once you start letting go of that attachment and, um, you know, you start showing people the real you for better or worse, and people respect that more, um, you know, whether that's socially or with women. So it sounds like um, you're saying, and tell me if I got this right, yeah. is uh, when you let go of the want to impress somebody, or you let go of the attachment, the need to impress somebody, that you just start being yourself with people. You start being real with people because you're not worried about what they think of you anymore. Right. right. Yeah. And that changes the way they treat you. Exactly. And, and you notice this directly in your life, like when that, when that, can you feel the difference when you drop the want and you start just like becoming more free? Yeah. And you just, you're free, you're more free to express yourself and you're less attached to the outcome also. So, you know, even if someone doesn't respond well, it's not the end of the world because you're more content with yourself. Um, nice. Yeah. And so do you notice a difference in when you let go of all these ones? And then I asked you this earlier on the phone. I'm just kind of curious. And I've noticed this in my life. And I want to know from Eddie too, when you start letting go of all these ones and these attachments and stuff that you just start behaving differently. It's not like you have to kind of think about it. Like there's the old me would try to think, okay, I need to walk like this, talk like this, look at her like this. And I almost make like this mental list in my head of how I had to be with women. What I found is when I release all the weird energy inside myself, the wants, the attachments, the trying to get it right, trying to be perfect, the need for validation, when I start letting all that go and revealing this part of myself that's really comfortable and happy with myself just the way I am, which is deeper under the surface, that my behavior just naturally starts changing. You notice that in your life? Yeah, 100%. And that's really the, the most significant thing that has changed, right? It's a bunch of small things every day. So, you know, you might get an email from someone who works in the same field as you saying, Hey, do you want to volunteer for this thing? And in the past I would have said no, but now, you know, why not, why not give it a try? And just a small thing like that starts to open up opportunities for you. Right. So yeah, you know, that, that little timer in your head when you approach a woman and, you know, she's not 100% responsive, you know, in the past I might've self ejected, but, you know, now I just sort of stay, stay with it. And then, you know, and you, you get more dates in that way. So it's like very, a lot of small mental blocks that, that you sort of, that sort of evaporate and it, and it makes just everyday living a lot easier. Have you ever looked um, back and said, wow, I was way smoother or way more comfortable talking to her or way more real. And I did things I didn't even know. I didn't even know I was going to do. Like it just, they just kind of came out of me uh like you started acting different and you're like wow who was that dude it was almost like who was that guy even though it was me did you ever have that experience yeah and um and a, lot of, a lot of times i look back and think about you know there's just a lot less thought that goes into doing things i'm operating off of my my, my gut instincts more mm -hmm. um and it just yeah it just feels a lot more natural there's a lot less thought that goes into it so and I, and I tend to get better reactions in that, you know, with that sort of thinking. So. Awesome. Awesome. How about you, Eddie? How about, have you ever noticed a difference in your, behavior? like how much, I know in the past you took a lot of workshops from pickup coaches and they gave you a lot of ways of being stand like this, dress like this, walk like this, drive a car like that, be like this. And there was a certain energy of, of how you had to be. Is that true? Is that true? Oh, for sure. 
Yeah. And when you started doing the work with us, we kind of started stripping a lot of that away. Did you notice a difference in the way you were saying and doing things? Uh, not so much from a list, but it almost started to become spontaneous. Uh, you mean like as far as talking to girls? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Like uh, all of a sudden I had to, I dropped, you know, these conversations that I would have in my head, like, hey, how are you? You know, what's your name? And my name is so-and-so. And then you're like, shit, now what? You know, versus like trying to really feel the energy, feel the energy, what's going on, feeling with her, understanding what's going on in your body, whether you're nervous or confident or scared or all of the above, you know, and, and just being okay with it because that shows, you know, how real you are. And that's what really attracts them. That's what I, you know, learned in the process of just being comfortable with being nervous, being comfortable with being scared, being comfortable with being, you know, me <laughs> and, and being seen. So conversations were just like, like it just happened. Like there was no, there was no script. There was no um, thing to, that I needed to identify. Like sometimes, you know, when I would help you guys coach, you know, uh, there's a few clients, you know, that would say, oh my God, I could never say that. That was brilliant. That was genius. Like I didn't, how did you come up with that? I'm like, I, I don't, I just, I feel what's going on and I'm playful and I feel the energy and I'm okay with being playful. Like I enjoy being playful with the girl and pushing the envelope, teasing, you know, and seeing how far I can go. Um, Cause that's essentially what we do. So we, we, we tease, we play. There's that dance that you talk about all the time. You know, the, the no, the yes, the maybe, the I don't know. And, and playing with that. But you also have to understand and, and read the girl in front of you or the person, you know, and feel their energy. Like, are you being too pushy? Are you being too needy? You know, or are you really just giving? And she's just coming to you and she's just playing with you. Yeah. And do you find that the conversation is a lot more fun this way? Oh my gosh, tenfold. Yeah. You want to have them, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? Because all of a sudden the, the, the teasing becomes fun and then you become powerful because, you know, she doesn't know what to do with you. She's like, is he real? Is he not real? He's really funny. And I can't even tell you how many times I had guys that, that just came out and tried to cock block me, especially the poor guys. You know, they yeah. just really would stand right in front of me with a girl and they're like, oh, hey, I'm sorry. You know, were you talking to her? I'm like, no, motherfucker, I'm just standing here. Yes, I was talking to her. <laughs> you know, and like, oh, sorry. And now they still have the beer in their hand and acting like dicks. And the girl would not talk to them, would just ignore them. And then you just walk away. And she would always say, oh, thank God. Yeah. You know, or sometimes I would feel, you know, that I'd have to be, you know, the man or masculine at that point. And you know, if I felt like she's really being annoyed and she really wants to talk to me, he's just annoying her. I would just say, hey, you know, thanks, you know, but, you know, we're trying to have a conversation. So I appreciate you, you know, have a nice night. Yeah, those guys, those guys trip me out. They come in the bar and you can, when a group of them come in the bar together, you can always feel it. It, creates, it raises the anxiety in the bar so much because they don't know how to be normal. They don't know how to be normal guys. They don't know how to have a normal, flowing, fun conversation and just enjoy another human being. They all have a fucking agenda when they come in the bar and they push, push, push with that agenda and they, and they do it from anxiety. All that pushing comes from so much anxiety under the surface. So they act confident on the top underneath the surface, I see all this anxiety. It all gets spread through the bar and then the women start putting up more and more guards. I don't know if you've ever, have you ever been in a room when like 10 different pools come in with a workshop or something like that and they're doing that stuff? Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, all the time. What really hit me was I remember it was my first experience with you guys and I saw Mike Conowitz standing at the bar and talking to like these two girls that were really interested in him and a bunch of like guys just try to came up and, you know, cause he's Mike. So they try to kind of push him out the way and he's just standing there being himself and they just disappeared. And their girls were just standing there and talking like, we want to talk to you. I was like, what the fuck just happened? I want to learn what he knows. <laughs> nice. and, 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 and I admired him so much because he was just a solid rock and didn't care about nothing. And I'm like, wow. And if you guys if you guys haven't seen Mike, maybe we'll get him on here for an interview at some point. But he's uh 
he's, he, he helps us out with a lot of stuff in the background. Um, some of you may have chatted with him, but he's had two strokes. And so he has a uh, half of his body is, uh, doesn't work as well as the other half and he limps, but he, um, I'll tell you, man, he goes for it. He he's goes a for powerful it. Human being. I admire him and love him so much. He's yeah. gone through a lot, a lot more than the average guy. And he just gets right back up there and goes, he's, he's had to do a lot of work. Um, and, he, and he, and just watching him just really made me think to myself, like I can do it too. You know, and I started questioning him and learning from him and seeing how he's feeling and things are going in his head and then just trying to do the same things. And I worked with him and, you know, I had yeah. the luxury of working with him, too. So it was great. He was one of the guys that in a workshop, he couldn't stop. He was one of the embodiment workshops. He started throwing up and he couldn't stop throwing up. Yeah, he went to the hospital. <laughs> and, yeah, and they, they told him there was nothing wrong with him. They sent him home. <laughs> But he was releasing a lot of stuff, you know, and he, he, he grew a lot after that workshop, grew a lot, pretty wild. Um, awesome. Um, so uh, let's jump back to Julian for a little bit. Um, uh, so Julian, jump in. What, there was a specific question I had for you, and I'm kind of blanking right now, and I'm trying to think of what it was. So my mind is going back in time a little bit. Give me one sec here. Um, have you had any experiences like that? Well, let's jump to that. Let's jump to it because I had another question. I can't remember what it is. It'll come back to me if it's important. But have you had any experiences like that where you really um, uh, had to go through a rough period? Because this is a big common thing that happens to a lot of students when they're releasing, doing embodiment work is they hit some of their dark stories. They hit some of the deep stuff that's inside of them and they feel a little crappy. They feel a little shitty and they, and the average person, they want to avoid, they want to go into this huge avoid. And that's what they do. We have all these avoidance strategies. Could be drinking, could be masturbation, could be porn. They don't come, they don't truly have a process for coming to acceptance with what they don't want to feel and then letting it go and revealing really good feelings to replace it with. Did you go through that? Do you remember like a time you went through yeah. some dark? like once a month I, I hit a new like plateau I guess um and it always feels terrible um yeah so a lot of times um I had a lot of self-loathing um you know where I'll you know I'll, or I'll be dating a girl she'll and she'll stop you know she, she won't want to talk to me anymore or I'll have some weird social interaction and a lot of it turns into you know what's wrong with you why are you like this you know you're an asshole you're stupid you suck those sorts of things and, and um, inside is this what you're saying to yourself inside these, these yeah moms? yeah yeah um so yeah it's sort of so in the past that those feelings i mean i couldn't describe them like that then but you know in the past those sort of feelings compounded and it really started to take a toll on my life which is how i ended up here um but now that i've you know started re revealing um sort of you, you in a way you welcome the pain because you realize you know that's how you how you let go of it so it always sucks, but it gets easier with each with each uh, with each wall you hit, just because you know you start to welcome it because you know you're letting go of this and you're going to come out stronger on the other side. So, yeah, it's uh, it's happening pretty frequently. I had a, a really good one last month, which is you know things have really taken a turn since then. So, um, yeah, I you know it's part of the process, right? Um, yeah. So I've come to enjoy it in a way even though it, it doesn't feel good going through it but um yeah let's go back to that like having an intense gym workout you love the suck but here's yeah, the, like a good sore yeah 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 and in my life i've had this experience many times where and this is how it is now when the suck comes on i kind of get happy at the same time as i feel shitty so i feel yeah. good about life because i know that as i process that suck I process that heavy energy in my body, the sadness, the grief that I know amazing things are going to happen out here afterwards, after it goes away. And even probably before it's going to start changing it. Something's going to happen. Somebody new is going to come into my life and I'll make more money. I'll get healthy or something will shift. And so when that, when it comes on now, it doesn't in the past, it would have been like, Oh, I feel shitty again. Now I'm like, eh, this is going to suck, but let's go through it because it's going to be great on the other side. So it doesn't actually suck for me anymore. It's, it's a weird thing. Do you have that experience? Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it feels like where, you know, you know, it's going to be shitty going through it, but you know, you're going to feel better on the, on the other side. So 
yeah, you come to enjoy it in a way. It's not only feel better, you're going to see results too. <laughs> There's going to be something that's going to happen typically, you know, and that's been my experience. Do you have that, Eddie? Oh, yeah. You're thinking that I suck? Well, thinking that you're stuck going through something like you ever have that moment, yeah, where you feel like you suck, like something hits you and you feel shitty and things are heavy and you start doing work to process that, whether it's revealing or embodiment or both. And you start processing all that deep energy and, and you, you know that on the other side of that are gifts. I get stuck. I mean, not as often as, as I, as I used to, but there's a lot of times where I get stuck all the time. Yeah. And, and I feel like I'm just spiraling down. I just have to, because then I get, I realize that I'm wanting again. And the more I'm, I'm attracting that, the more I keep spiraling down. So the minute I feel like I'm that stuck, I just go through the process of letting go of the want and just kind of releasing the sadness. Because usually it's it's a lot of sadness and depression that, that I get stuck with. And then embodying that and then having that be a part of me and enjoy it a little bit. Enjoy the sadness, enjoy the, the grieving, the depression, even though it sucks. But, um, and then it just kind of just flows away. And then what happens in the world around you when it floats away? Everything just becomes more clear. Yeah. Answers can, to come to you. Yeah. Answers just come right away. Less tension, um, you know, all around your body. And you're like, oh, and then new ideas start popping up. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Just because I, I noticed that when I'm depressed or when I'm sad, everything seems foggy. And, and then everything just becomes crystal clear. Yeah. Yeah. So they have Say again? Yeah, I've had the same feeling. Yeah. Just nice. the, the clarity. It's nice when you see that clarity, isn't it? When it yeah. comes to the day. It's like this. I think of it as it's like seasons, right? Law of rhythm. You got the um, sunny days, you got cloudy days. You got night, you got day. You got winter, you got summer, spring and summer. And suddenly I know when I'm in the darkness that it's just like when I was a little kid, I was scared of the dark. Now as an adult, I'm no longer scared of the dark. It can be enjoyable. Same with sadness. But I know that the soon after the dark is going to be followed by another sunny day eventually. So that's just the way it goes. Um, so let's dive into releasing itself. What is releasing to each one of you guys or revealing? Let's say revealing. What is it to do? What and the basic, most basic description? If somebody out there that's new on this call that's saying, what are they talking about? What is this thing that they're doing that changes their lives? Now, it's we could we, we could spend two days talking about it. We could spend a week describing different ways to reveal and process emotions. But at the basic core level, how would you describe it? Like if, you, if somebody asked you and you had a, just a few, few minutes to answer the question, who wants to go first? I'll go first. For me, really, it's about whatever emotions that I'm feeling, whatever emotions that I'm stuck with, whatever comes up, anxiety, you know, pride even comes up, um, courage, whatever is happening with me, I learn to just let it just go through my body, let it shift from head to toe. Where am I feeling it? How am I, how is it making my body feel? And where is it stuck in my body? Because, you know, we have a lot of different energies in our body, the six, the six chakras. So wherever it's stuck, I learned to just um, keep it there and just really feel whatever emotion is there um, because there's motion on emotions that just keep falling. And then you just have to just keep welcoming everything. And as you're welcoming and you're asking your body to welcome it, things just kind of just slowly and slowly start letting go. And then all those negative or positive emotions that you thought were negative or positive become more clear and become more of your embodiment. And then you're able to be a little bit more vulnerable and the answers just come to you. So, and, and it sucks, it hurts. So it is painful. Um, sometimes it's not, but most of the time it is. So you just have to be ready and understand that because you're processing pain, we're processing all these life challenges that we have from birth on things that we don't remember, thing, uh, things that are in our subconscious, which is why we release them. Um, because all the consciousness stuff, just kind of, it's there. So we know it's there, but it, learning to get the subconscious of the releasing and understanding what emotions come up for you. And as soon as you let go, it just 
you become so light and you feel like you're walking on air and that feels so fucking good. Do you ever reveal, cause you said it's painful and I want to, I want to ask you another question and then we'll go to Julian. Do you ever reveal in light emotions, like courage, love, peace? Do you ever just let them go and then see what's beyond them? And that's where, to me, a release is like, I'm letting go of heavy emotions. I'm letting go of apathy, grief, fear, lust, anger, pride. And revealing is revealing what's beyond those emotions, which is, should be moving us towards courage, acceptance, love, peace. So we're revealing the lightest parts of ourselves, right? Do you ever re release on and reveal on those higher emotions? Oh, yeah. Because what I think that are high emotions, what I think are courage, are really anger or fear combined together. And then I really understand what courage is. And that's when acceptance and peace comes in. Mm. So once I understand what courage and pride are, acceptance and peace becomes a lot lighter and it's not being forced. It just comes and I'm peaceful with the thought of it. Nice. Yeah. And the less you hold on, try to hold on to them, the more right. you just expand and you keep going deeper and deeper. So, so the releasing becomes lighter and lighter when, when you're in that state of being, I would imagine. Yeah. at least for me it does um so they just so you guys understand the scale goes apathy grief fear lowest and heaviest emotion to lightest apathy is the heaviest grief is the, and then fear so grief is the crying fear is the anxiety doubt worry nervousness lust wanting chasing needing that's that's another category which is called lusting or and then there's uh the next one would be uh you feel less anger which would be like rage hate uh you know, that type of stuff. Then pride, which is like judgment. It's a sense of right, wrong. Uh, it's a win-lose energy. Then courage, which is win-win, which is where you start to feel like exci excitement for life, turn on for life. And then acceptance, which is where you just feel like you're being, everything is being perfect. And then love, and then uh, uh, love, you know, gratitude, joy, and then uh, peace. Uh, limitless, you know, pieces, an example would be limitless. So each one of these has a lot of different emotions going, but you notice I described heavy. You cut out, Brian. If I go through it again without adding all the extra words, oops, hold on one sec. Testing one, two, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So if I go through it again without adding all the extra words, it would be apathy, grief, fear, lust, anger, pride. Courage, acceptance, love, peace. It's lost their video, Brian. Yeah, I did that on purpose. Oh, okay. I turned the video off so that you guys can hear me for a second until this, uh, and then I'm going to turn it back on. Very cool. So, Julian, can you describe to us what um, releasing is for you, and, and what, how would you describe it to somebody or revealing? Yeah, um, I would say you have a lot of stored emotions in your body, and you know those can be, you know, they can be traumatic uh, also. So, you know, releasing is a way of welcoming those emotions, right? So like the first step is, you know, the first step is acknowledging that those feelings exist and then, you know, being able to let those emotions go so that they don't weigh you down, right? Um, um, yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a process and that, you know, you have to acknowledge, um, these feelings that you have, right? Um, and you have to be honest. It forces you to be honest with yourself. Um, and then that's like a big step on the path to acceptance, right? Where you have to acknowledge yourself, let go of the past, and then uh, make space for, for these new lighter emotions. Um, yeah, and I think there's, those emotions are there. Every, they're, every, they're like, there's so many layers, right? Like you can, there's always another layer you can go. There's always a feeling under the feeling under the feeling. So um, I think it's it's work that everyone is able to access. And, um, you know, it's, it would be beneficial for, for anyone to do. Um, yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Great answers, guys. Now, for you guys out there listening right now, just so you guys know, we have the uh, revealing live that's coming up. It's going to be at the end of the month in July. If you guys want to check that out or you're interested in watch, being attending it live in Miami or you want to watch it online, there's a link in the chat box. You can click on that now to learn more about it. So definitely check that out. I see that Michael's going already. He said, I can't wait. Um, it's going to be, uh, I'm sure it's going to be sold out soon. It's going to be a pretty, it's going to be a pretty big room. It's going to be pretty crowded as far as a good crowd, good sized crowd. And uh, we're going to have a blast. We always have a blast. It's an amazing hotel on the beach. So there's beautiful women. There's a beach. There's a perfect beach, gorgeous water. 
I mean, it's, it's a hell of a good time to be out there. So, um, and a beautiful area to be in. So if you want to come out to Miami and enjoy the sun with us, definitely check that out. If you want to check it out online, um, we also have an online option. So let's dive in a little deeper now or not deeper. Let's move to questions. We got some guys that have questions. Uh, did, did you ever get YouTube operational, uh, over there, Andrew? No, uh, Cairo is going to stream this tomorrow. Um, and I'll be there for comments, but for now, we don't have anybody on YouTube. No, that's too bad. Usually we have a lot of questions from YouTube. So guys, there's a Q and a box in, and there you go. So we're, questions are starting to come in. So feel free for the Q, the question and answer portion to start putting some questions in the Q and a box and we can, uh, for the, uh, for either of these two guys and, uh, for Julian or Eddie, and, uh, we'll dive in from there. Okay, guys. So Matthias, Matthias, Welcome back, buddy. Good to have you back. And uh, no, the lodging is not included, uh, Leo. That's, um, you have to decide. There's many different options for hotels around there, but you can check it out. But the event's not that, it doesn't cost that much. Just, you know, and as far as I'm concerned, I think it's fairly, it's very affordable. Uh, okay, Matthias, Matthias, excuse me. I've been doing movement and observing my emotions for the past week. I'm also welcoming and letting go of beliefs that are not related to who I prefer to be. But I noticed that when I started to feel very good, the next day I did fall to do to doing things to feel apathy and pain again. I'm having this tendency for half of my life or so. What can I do to break the pattern? Does one of you want to give this a shot? You want to answer any questions? Do you have any ideas based on your own lives? Um, yeah, I mean, it sound I would say it's like. It's like homeostasis, right? Where you, you've been so used to feeling this way your whole life that even once you start to climb out of the hole, your body is trying to pull you back just because that's what, what your body's used to, right? It's like if you, you start trying to lose weight, right? You lose 10 pounds and then you have one cheeseburger and you shoot back up because your body wants to keep you at this weight that it's been comfortable at, even if that's not the comfortable weight uh, generally. So I, I, guess, I guess my advice would be to just keep at it and to... And to pay attention to those things that you do that have you feeling apathy and pain, right? Like, um, you know, and try to take yourself out of that, that rhythm that it gives you and notice what comes up when you do that. Um, and then, yeah, and then release on, on those feelings that come up because there's always something underneath the apathy and the pain. It also, um, feels, like, it also feels like that's his comfort zone. So yeah. because our, when our body starts shifting, they, it doesn't know how to be in a certain feeling or a certain emotion. It's like when you start working out in the gym, right? Your muscles start being sore. You're not, you're not used to this new movement. You start using muscles you've never used before. So that's what's happening. And then your body just wants to stay in that pattern. So I would also look into, cause it sounds like self-sabotage. So probably do some movement, do some observing about self-sabotage. Um, because that's, that's also, I can relate to you because I always felt like I need to go back to my old habits and my old patterns. And that's basically like self-sabotage. So start maybe doing some releasing and emotions around self-sabotage. This is good. Um, I've did this a lot. So I'm going to throw in one more thing is one of the things I started to do because I had such a bad habit of going back to old patterns is I made, my goal was to get back on the horse faster each time. So if I, if I fell off the horse, Next time, could if I fall off, I want to get back on the horse faster than the last time. So I want my sabotage to be shorter and lighter each time. I and mean, that way I'm not forcing myself to quit all at once and until I can fully just kind of let it go. And it eventually does happen. If I, it, it, this, this also allows me to celebrate the fact that, yeah, I fell off, but instead of being the, sad for two days, I was only sad for a day and a half. Instead of being sad for a day and a half, I was only sad for one day. And I were, and I released and got myself back out of it. And then pretty soon you're down to an hour instead of, and instead of three hours, you know, and it starts to get shorter and shorter. So um, it's always about, for me, it's always about incremental changes. What can my body handle right now to get to the next level? And then that starts to compound. Um, good stuff. Um, Eric, uh, let's see here. What do you do when you're chasing want, like adding layers? I don't know if I'm adding layers or if it's a story. What should I do? I have a lot of fear that I might lose it if I uh, stay with the feeling and the, stay with a feeling and control it. You stayed. 
you stay, you stay, I don't know if you meant said, you stay realize on releasing, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know what he means by that. That sentence doesn't make sense. You say to realize on releasing and I, I don't know how to do it. So I guess this question here is what do you do when you're chasing want and adding layers? Um, uh, or if it's just, or if this layers are, he's wondering if layers are a story. He doesn't know what he's doing with it. He seems like he's, he seems like, uh, do you guys get the idea what the question is? Yeah, more or less. Mm -hmm. I have, and he has a fear he'll lose it if he stays with the feeling. Okay, go ahead and go jump in. Um, we all feel that way. We all feel like we're going to lose the the moment, the emotion of what's happening. And most of the time you will. It's, it's just what you were talking about, Brian, is when you're falling off the horse and getting back on the horse. So chasing something that you want. I mean, we all do that. And it's it's learning to let go like what i was mentioning earlier is letting go of the want if i'm if i'm making sense of what his question is he wrote more about it i did let go of the want but i kept holding it after my mind uh after i let it go in my mind worrying about it worrying that i'm not gonna get it and uh i feel it in my chest and my head spinning what do i do so he goes into the spins trying to let it go that's that's what we we're talking about earlier so if you're falling into that spin just kind of just stop because you're just forcing. Um, so let go of the forcing, let go of the wanting to achieve, let go of outcomes. So it's kind of reverse. So if once you're going into that spin, re start releasing and start feeling on everything the complete opposite to get yourself out of that spin. What do you mean by that, the complete opposite? So like if I'm, if I'm releasing on, uh, if I'm releasing on, being sad if i'm releasing on, on apathy and, and being depressed and i keep falling into that spin because i can't get out of it so what is the opposite of that is feeling happy feeling joy what is it like to feel happy what is it like to feel joy what is it like to feel prideful so then i'm i'm confusing the emotions and then i start feeling something different i'm no longer in a spin and then i can get the real feeling and real emotion of really what's there interesting i'll play with that i think that's when you came up with yourself that's yeah. Um, and uh, what would you say to that, uh, Julian? Um, you ever so, go, with Julian? Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, this I enjoy the spins just because all the emotions are so prevalent and they're so strong that I think that's when I get my biggest releases. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I don't. Know, I guess I'm not 100 percent understand the question, but it sounds like if you're you're chasing something that you want, but she said you also, if I stay with the feeling and I control it, I think. I think what's uh, he's saying there, because he, he wrote a second part to it. I think what he was saying there is that he, he goes to release, but then he goes in the spin worrying about what he just released on. Is Did he do it right? Is it working? And he starts to go into the spins from there. So, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, it's, I guess you make the most progress when you're not, like constantly clocking whether or not you're making progress, if that makes sense. So, so just keep letting go and eventually the, this won't be, how do I say this? Um, yeah, if you just keep releasing on the want, then one day you just look up and you won't want it as bad. And, and then that way you'll have more control, right? Because right, right now it sounds like your want is controlling you um, versus, you know, once you let go of that want, then, and you're not so pressed and pushing for what you're, what is he going for? You'll, you'll be in a better position if I'm. I get what you're saying. It, it, when I hear him say that, I hear that as he releases the want, he has a want for the want to go away. And so he's stuck okay. in a double, he's stuck in a double want and then it causes him to start spinning. So uh, what I would do is like exactly what you just said, Julian too, is um, can you release the want without look, without wanting just like it, don't look for it to go away. Just release yeah. on it. And if it doesn't go away today, it'll go away tomorrow and, and keep going about your day. Quit looking for constant, quit looking back and seeing if something changed and just trust that it's going to change. And then you'll notice that it changed because your external circumstances will start changing in the outside world. You start seeing, oh, things are getting better. But every time you guys look back and say, did that good enough? You're telling the subconscious mind 
it wasn't good enough. Otherwise you wouldn't look back. So you got to train yourself to, to just look towards where you want to go. And that, that, that takes a little bit of work. It also sounds like people are misconstruing this as a technique when it's not a technique. Yeah. It's so a feeling. There's no, there's no right or wrong answer. It's whatever yeah. emotions come up for you. I would agree. Let's, uh, let's go to GZ. GZ, hey, Brian. Question, how to set boundaries with old friends? My experience, I have friends who insult me a lot when we fight or argue. I already told them that I don't like that, but it still doesn't change anything. Do you, do you want to answer this, Julian? Because I know you just went through some of this, right? Yeah, um, there's some fear of confrontation, probably. Um, there's some sort of fear, or um, like fear of, like being ostracized by your friends or something. Um, but yeah, um, definitely release on what it is you're afraid of. Um, currently, I'm working on like getting in touch with anger. So if you can really like get angry and push your foot down and let you, let people know that like this is not a joke, um, and you know that's something that may help also. But um, yeah, um, there's definitely a fear um, there, and um, that's probably what's keeping you from really setting boundaries. Is you know fear of what'll happen if you if you really push your foot down. So um, there's that. Um, or you can also just like really step out there, put your foot down and, and feel what comes up, right? Like maybe you, you set this, this small boundary with one of them and they might bring up some feelings and you can start to let that go. And that'll give you insight into what it is exactly that's holding you back. But um, yeah, it's most likely, it sounds like uh, some sort of fear. Yeah, and I would say that the only thing I'd say is he's saying, uh, and you tell me if I'm right, just to use proactive anger, not reactive. So this idea that I'm going to consciously use my anger in a proactive way, in a productive way. Yeah. That's, 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 that's kind of what I was going to say, actually. Yeah. Jump in, Eddie. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, so it's, it's, again, think about the giving versus, uh, the giving versus uh, getting. So he's trying to get a result from, he's trying to get them to stop. So he's pushing that energy. Hey, stop doing that. Versus like, hey, you know what? I'm just asking you to stop. And not looking for a confrontation, not looking for any outcome. So the more he's pushing for that to stop, the more they're gonna keep going at him. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah. Perfect answer. Um, Rudy uh, asks, Hello, Brian. Is it better to focus on these one thing a day? You gotta, you gotta put that on vibrate, buddy. It is on vibrate. It's the, it's the. Oh, the computer screen. Yeah, I've had that happen. Is it better to focus on releasing one thing a day or to try to release a little in all parts? What do you guys think? Yeah, I think you can do both. Um, yeah. I think uh, it's sort of the biggest. The most beneficial thing about releasing or revealing is that it's it's immediately applicable to any part of your life, right? So you can, once you get the tech, once you get the thing or the technique down, you can go outside right now and, you know, walk to Walmart and someone looks at you funny at Walmart, you can ask yourself, you know, why did that make me feel shame? Why did that make me feel guilt? So, um, you know, going throughout your day, you can release on all sorts of feelings that come up based on whatever happens to you throughout the day and then you can come home at night or first thing in the morning, you can release on something specific, um, um, you know, for you sort of, you know, take things up as they come and, you know, release on whatever feelings come up as they come up. Um, I think the space to do both with releasing. Awesome. That's a good answer. Yeah, Eddie, do you want to jump in on this one? I agree with Julian. It's as things come up, you know, just release on all the, everything that comes up. And it's what we were talking about earlier is that there's different layers of emotions that are part of that one emotion. So it's like an onion. So the more you peel, the, the closer you'll get to the core. So it's not just releasing one thing. It's releasing, like Julian mentioned, everything that's coming up. Yeah. And so do you guys ever do, you guys ever do any uh, revealing on feeling courage, acceptance, love, peace in a sense? Like, okay, let's say that guy looks at me funny. And I feel like a little anger. And then I welcome the anger. I sit with the anger. I notice all the aspects of the anger. I start letting the anger go. 
And then as the anger gets lighter and lighter and I start to feel my, the sense it's going away, then I start welcoming more and more love or courage or acceptance or peace, or I start welcoming more and more. And then I start uh, letting that go and I'll feel my chest open. I'll feel my body may kick on. And then pretty soon I wonder what I was ever angry about. Do you guys ever take it that far where you start doing into the revealing portion? Because that's a that's an important thing I've been really pushing lately in the programs. Yeah, um, yeah so I've been trying to do that. I've, I've actually just recently found out that I'm like resistant to feeling a lot of those upper emotions. Um, so I've been letting go of the resistance to feeling joy and courage and acceptance. So um, that's sort of where I'm at in my journey. But yeah, I, I try to welcome those things too. But yeah, there's always, I found that there's, they're kind of like at opposite ends, ends of the spectrum. So whenever I, um, you know, whenever I try to, whenever I release on fear, it triggers some sense of courage. Whenever I release on sadness, it triggers some sense of, of acceptance, right? Um, whenever I release on apathy, it, it triggers some sort of, some sense of peace. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I answered your question, but, but, uh, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I make it a point to try to welcome those upper emotions also. How about you, Eddie? I enjoy welcoming the upper emotions um, because when I welcome them, I realize that um, there's negative emotions that are trapped in those higher emotions. So like, for example, courage, I feel a lot of fear. I feel a lot of um, anger actually, and, and pride lately. And that's something that I've been playing with a lot for the like past couple of months now is pride. Um, so I'm learning how to release and, and enjoy the pride. I'm, I feel like I I'm beginning to hate the pride. So what I'm trying to do is I'm, as I'm releasing, what's really behind that pride and how can I enjoy the pride to become more peaceful and acceptance with it? Yeah. And with people, like you were mentioning, it's funny you say that because I do get um, anxious and nervous around people lately that normally I don't. So I'm trying to understand why that's happening. And that's probably the pride. So, and, and I keep playing with it. So that's when it just starts to keep coming out for me is my pride. And I try to, well, not try, but I accept everything. Like I welcome the emotions that's happening in my body. And lately I've noticed that it's a lot of like fear. So, As you drop more pride, you get more vulnerable. Yeah. There's a lot of vulnerability under pride. For sure. And I think I'm trying to true. cover it up for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. You, and you're starting to feel more, even more vulnerable than I've seen you, Eddie. So that's really good. Um, okay. Let's, let's, let's see if we can speed round these now since we're getting a little past an hour. So anonymous attendee, where does the shame fit into revealing model? And do you address this during the program, like in the experience atten intensive? Yes, we do address shame. Do you guys want to do one of you? Let's have one of you answer the question. Who wants to answer? Julian. Yeah, go ahead. You got it. Where does um, shame fit, in it, fit into revealing? No, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Do you have a real shame, uh, Julian? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of I have a lot of judgment on my shame, or the, like the, the judgment causes the shame because there's a lot of you know, there's the fear, and then there's me saying, Oh, you shouldn't, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself for, for, for being afraid, right? There's guilt, and oh, you should be ashamed of yourself for being guilty, right? Like this, yeah, there's a lot of judgments on top of a lot of the emotions that I feel, which is which is the source of the shame. Um, well, shame is actually uh, at its core, and we talk about this in the, in the event, shame at its core is self-hate. It's uh, And it's quite usually triggered by some form of childhood abandonment, emotional abandonment or physical, but, but it's at, at its core, I don't, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. And so we all, a lot of people have some level of shame in them. So it's in the lower three emotions, typically around grief is where shame is stored. So you should be ashamed of yourself. You know, um, is, it, is it the example you just used. So, and as you come out of it, you tend to come up. Did you want to say something, Eddie? I, th I think guilt as well. You feel guilty. So you feel shameful for feeling guilt. 
Yeah, but you can have guilt without shame. A healthy person can have guilt without shame, but you can't have shame without guilt. Um, for me, for me, like I felt guilty if I would, you know, make someone angry, or I felt guilty if I would, you know, stick up for myself, and I felt ashamed of that. Yeah, yeah. So you felt shame and stick standing up. Yeah, it's because the shame is at the core. Yeah. Because shame drives the guilt. Because at the dead level, I'm not worthy, so I feel guilty for standing up for myself. But if you felt worthy, you really believe in yourself, I'm worthy, then you wouldn't feel guilty for standing up for yourself. But you can feel guilty uh, if you do something truly wrong. Like let's say you yell at somebody because you lost control, you can feel guilty, but not ashamed because you got healthy self-esteem. So it's, and it gets complex. We could talk about this for days, but let's, uh, it, it, as we go deeper and deeper, you start to realize this stuff as you release more and more, all this starts to become obvious. Um, how did you let go of pushing in your life, Eddie? John asked. Um, how did I let go of pushing? Yeah. I realized that I wasn't getting the results I wanted because the more I pushed, the further I was getting away from the results. So I started to let go of the want you know, starting to release on the want to start release on the outcomes. And the moment I let go of the outcome or surrender to whatever outcome could be, the more things start happening. So the more I realized that the less pushing I was doing and the more giving I was being. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, we're going to see if we can rush through these last three. Sure. Uh, sometimes when I'm releasing heaviness in my heart, I feel it leaking to my gut and have to release in my gut now. Is that normal or healthy? Yes. Yeah. Big time. Yeah, there you go. Julian, would you say the same thing? Yeah, I feel like, yeah, you feel it. I feel like different emotions trigger you in different spots, which is, um, you know, connected to the chakras and all this sort of thing. So, yeah, you feel it all over. And I, and I feel like a lot of times where you feel it tells something about how it's affecting your life. So yeah, normally I just, I don't really think about that too much. I just release the feeling from wherever I feel it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely part of, part of the releasing process for sure. Awesome. And for you guys that haven't checked out the link, check out the link for the Revealing Mastery class live that's going on at the end of July. There's a link in the chat box. Let's continue on. Uh, how do you not wallow in a heavy emotion for too long? Because wallowing is one. People get trapped in wallowing a lot and they think they're, they think they're welcoming. They think they're being with the emotion, but they're actually wallowing. Can you, can you, do you have a good feeling of what the difference is? Wait, one more time, Brian, what was your question? What's the difference between thought? They says, how do you not get trapped in a heavy emotion, like wallowing for too long? How do you not wallow in a heavy emotion for too long? I've wallowed quite some time, so I can totally relate to that. Uh, I just started being tired of, of, of feeling that. And the more I wallowed inside, the more I kept being it, the more I just, I realized the more I wanted to just break free. And every time that happened, I just kept wallowing. So I just stopped. Like, honestly, I just, I think you even told me, right? It's like, Edward, just stop. And I'm like, huh? And it just kind of stops and freezes for a minute. And then you just kind of start to, um, allow other emotions to come up yeah in my experience wallowing is typically because you there's some aspect of you feeling like a victim and so you're not welcoming your act you're feeling like a victim and you're, you're so you're sitting in this yep I, I, in resignation rather than acceptance you're resigning yourself to feeling this emotion which is an apathy it's the lowest emotion versus actually looking at it from acceptance and feeling it and learning to tell that difference is everything. Letting go of the victim, I'm not a victim to this, that power it has over you, this heaviness doesn't, doesn't own me, I can feel it, I can be with it, I'm a man, I can handle it. And then, then it starts to loosen. Um, unless you wanna say something, we got one more. Uh, Julian, did you wanna say anything with that? Um, yeah, I just, just stop wallowing, I guess, yeah, you, you detach yourself from that feeling, right? Like if you're like if you're wallowing in the feels like you're in that emotion versus you know saying this is an emotion that I'm experiencing and I can let this go. Um, maybe if you think of it that way, then you that'll help with you wallowing. But um, yeah, just stop wallowing. <laughs> I, yeah, okay. 
Yeah, wallowing is just, wallowing is the victim. That's yeah, just, just real quick, I just want to make it maybe a little bit more sense, Brian, to what you were saying because you're the you're you're being like what Julian was saying. You're you're a victim of that emotion, and you're 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 being in that emotion. So you're not. That's not who you are. You're just allowing that to be you. Yeah, yeah. you got to step back and observe how you're making it mean something. Right. That's all the start really you know what's this mean about me can am i making it mean something am i making it mean something about my life and my future does it mean something so these are different questions you start to learn to ask yourself in the revealing process some of these deeper questions that start to break stuff up you're stuck in um okay rudy last question here for the day um just to add more detail to my previous question i am trying to release numbness in my heart and turn on so i generally try to let the feelings come to me but i but it usually comes from my gut as i feel that the most that the most right now well then i would personally work with what you're where it's coming from there's a reason that's probably happening what are you guys feeling there might be a reason you're, you need to release something from your gut for your heart to turn open which is actually not uncommon could be shame. Every yeah. time I'm with my guys on the vulnerability call, um, and when they're stuck in that gut, it's usually a shame. Yeah, the gut has a huge. The the more the gut opens, the safer the heart feels to open. It's very common. So it could be shame. Could be something like that. So just keep releasing there and see what happens. Your body is showing you something. Learn from it, and don't don't make the body wrong, and, and uh, you'll see what happens. And maybe, go back. Also, and maybe also stop not trying to get your heart to open. I think he's also just focusing on, on his heart. And, and the more he focuses on that, the more numbness he's getting here. And the more he's feeling down here versus just focusing here and what's really present there. Yeah. And then just allowing the heart to open by itself without forcing it. And you could go back and forth between the gut and the heart and just welcome what's there. And if the heart's closed, let it be closed. Let it be known, let it be shut down, then go back to the gut and release, then go back to the heart and then go back to the gut. And you can do that slowly back and forth until something starts to break open. Um, awesome. Well, anything you guys want to say in closing today uh, about uh, revealing and how much it's changed your life or the course that's coming up or just in general to what we talked about today, what's coming up for you guys? Oh, yeah. yeah, I would say, yeah, revealing is is huge just because, you know, it's a way of processing emotions that you're going to you're going to experience. Right. As a human being, you're going to experience, you know, the whole breadth of emotions and you need to be able to learn how to handle that in order to to live life. Right. Like, um, you know, I know Fearless has like an online revealing package. I would buy that as soon as possible. Um, to be, you know, you can. Once you get a handle on that, you, you'll start seeing progress in your life immediately. Um, you'll, you'll get more value out of the workshops because you, you, you're able to handle all the emotions that come up. Um, yeah, I think revealing is like the key to all of this. Um, so yeah, I would I highly recommend um, getting, getting involved in revealing as soon as possible. And you haven't done embodiment, right, Julian? So maybe someday no. we'll get you in there <laughs> down the road. That's intense. That's an intense beast, but uh, um, it has revealing aspects to it too. Huge revealing aspects. Eddie, did you want to say anything in closing? Yeah, I just want to basically touch real quick back on what Julian said. Um, you know, regarding getting to the programs, I, I completely agree with him. Um, get yourself into programs. Um, don't look at you know, release on the money aspect. How much you think the program really is versus what it really is. Because what is the dollar amount that you have on your life and to the real answers that you want to your questions, you know, your life, you know, how, how much is your life worth to you? And for me, I spent, because I wanted to be the best me and I had no dollar figure on that. And I thank Brian and Dave and I'll do it 10 times over again if I had to. Um, and the one thing I can leave you guys with tonight is because there's a lot of questions about, you know, pushing versus, you know, um, attracting, wanting. So just think about this guy. So every time you guys go out or every time you're talking to someone, think about actually giving something to that person, you know, just completely out of kindness, just out of your heart. 
versus trying to take something, trying to get an outcome, right? Mm -hmm. Having expectations that this person might like, having an expectation that. Sorry about that, guys. So, having expectations of, of certain outcomes. So really just go out there and just really in, give and enjoy giving. Like compliment somebody without, you know, wanting to get her phone number like two seconds later. Just say, hey, I just want to tell you how beautiful you are. Or come up to a guy and be like, hey, man, nice shirt. You know, or something. Whatever you're feeling, you, you know, true to you, really what you want to say to that guy or to that girl. Um, and see this shifts that happen. Like, does that feel good to you? Or do emotions come up for you? And then feel those emotions and then talk about them, you know, release on them. And then you'll start to seeing the more you're actually giving versus taking, the more you're going to get into your life. And it's not just overnight. So it takes time and process. But I think that's huge because that was huge for me. And I teach that to the guys all the time. So. And are either of you guys going to be in Miami? You both can come. I mean, I'd love to have you both as guests if you want to come out. I'm going to be, I'm trying to, Brian. I'm really considering coming. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, I'll be awesome. And um, love to have you guys as a guest hanging out and stuff like that and talk to the crowd and stuff like that. So, um, you know, get you a free ticket if you haven't got a ticket or if you did, let us know. We'll just take care of you. So, um, so uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Look forward to having uh, meeting some of you guys in Miami. Uh, if there's not, a, if you haven't checked the link, hit the link in the chat box. Check it out. The Revealing Masterclass will be in Miami the end of July. All the details are in the uh, on the page when you, when it click, when it comes up. And um, I look forward to meeting you all. And it's going to be an awesome weekend. And this, this is literally this is going to be one of our biggest events ever. I think we're going to have. We, the rooms capped that we only we had to cap the room i think because of covid at 100 and i think we're going to hit 100 no problem and we're gonna have a bunch of people online so before it sells out if you want to come live make sure you get get your ticket um that's it guys have a beautiful day and uh thank you eddie thank you julian it's awesome thanks, having you guys and i'll talk to you all soon take care thanks Brian. bye guys bye.